we've tried to help them understand that marriage is really important in our home. And, and I think we want to be an example to our children, not just to the world, but to our children. They're going to remember how we uh, made our marriage a priority in our home. Welcome to the Focus on the Family broadcast, helping families thrive. Sometimes that transition from marriage to parenting can be a little sticky and have some difficulty attached to it. And we tend to forget about our spouse and concentrate on our children. Pat and Ruth, welcome to Focus. Uh, Ruth, welcome back, actually. Thank you. It's good to have you. Pat, first time. Yes. It's Are really you nervous? No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> now, most no, husbands it's... coming in here, I mean, it's like, wow, okay, what are they going to ask us? Yeah. But this is a great story. It's a, an important one. You're mm-hmm. a pastor. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I love that perspective that you bring in terms of the scripture and how it enlightens us. Uh, your expectation of an ideal marriage was kind of dashed the morning of your wedding, right? Uh, what happened? Yeah. I mean, I love these wedding stories. I do want to do a book someday just on, you know, wedding stories. Wedding's gone and, and wrong. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, honeymoon stories because it's it's rare to have it go perfectly. Well, I, I don't know what in me thought it was a good idea to get married really early in the morning. So I wasn't <laughs> I was, thinking... I, I thought you were going to end the sentence right there. <laughs> get married. Pat, I'm so sorry. Now we're doing counseling. I just asked the marriage on program. Sweat, yeah. <laughs> Continue, please. Now I'm nervous. But it takes so long to get ready and all together. So, <laughs> what time was this? Uh, well, I think it was at ten. Yeah, don't tell. Ta- okay, early. I don't know if I really remember the exact time, but it was either ten I think it or was 11. eleven. But it was okay. before. Well, noon, I say ten. <laughs> he says lunch. eleven. Yeah. You know, it's okay. nineteen years ago, but. I got up at like four o'clock in the morning and I don't do so well early in the morning. So <laughs> I for, kind of forgot about that. And I started to feel sick as I was get, they were doing my hair and I wasn't feeling so well. So we have a picture of me sitting in the back of the car on the way to the wedding ceremony. I have my wedding dress on, my hair's all done, my makeup, and I have a towel over me and a huge pot in my lap because I thought I was going to get sick. <laughs> oh. I thought you were going to say you had a pot of coffee. Oh, no. So that that is, uh, it didn't start out uh, just like I thought it would, but it all worked did out. Did it get better? It did get better. <laughs> Thankfully, Let's say everything the ceremony, was... did it go well? Yes, everything went well, but... The road leading up to that did not go so well. So that was kind of the uh, kind of the imagery of what marriage was shaping up for you. Yeah, right? I like thought chaos. I thought this is going to be beautiful and wonderful, and then I felt really sick. Yeah. I think we stopped by uh, my groomsman and I were, were on the way to the church, and we actually stopped by uh, her parents' house. And so you're not supposed to do that. We're not know. supposed to do that. <laughs> and I just remember uh, in the wee hours of the morning seeing Ruth darting out of the house carrying this large you know, cooking pot, like the kind you make loads of chili in. And she was just running from, you know, from the house to the car. And I knew right then and there. You were in trouble. Yeah, going to be very different than what I thought. Yeah, I bet. uh, The the luster was uh, erased pretty quickly. Yes, absolutely. Why do you think marriage is so important to God? I've asked this of marriage experts almost always. Why do you think he did it this way? Yeah, it's a great, great question. Um, and I think you know what you see at the very beginning of the Bible is is God creating that first man, and throughout Genesis one, as you guys know, you know everything He's creating, He's declaring to be good. Mm-hmm. And uh, then for the first time, we see in Genesis two that that something that He created uh, was not good. He looks at that first man and says, "This is this is not good. It's not good for a man to be alone." And He gifts him with a, a wife, with a spouse, that the two of them get to do life together. There's something special about doing life together that reflects who God is. Yeah. And of course, we come to the New Testament and read Paul's words in Ephesians 5, that there's something good about marriage, not just because of what we get out of it, but mm. because of what God is doing uh, to a watching world or for a watching world, that in some way our marriage has a greater mission to put God on display to those around us. And you know, we oftentimes ask that question of ourselves, is our marriage telling the truth about who God is? Mm. Wow. And, uh, and I, so I think that, that for whatever reason, God in his wisdom and his goodness mm. gives us this beautiful gift of marriage, the sharing of life together, not just for the sake of one another, but ultimately uh, to reflect his glory, his goodness, his love for us to a watching world. Well, and I love that picture because it gives us uh, something to aim for that's much higher you know, than perhaps we do right mm-hmm. now, even in Christian you know, community. Yeah. Um, in your book, For Better or For Kids, uh, you mentioned why we need to look at our spouse as a gift from God. Now, some, I'm just hearing somebody just go, oh, really? You don't know my husband, man. He can never find 
the spot where all the dirty clothes go. And it's been this way for 15 years. It's driving me crazy. And the way he eats and the way he does everything. I mean, you get, you could fill in the blank. There's exasperation there. They're just going, ah, I have to look at him or I have to look at her as a gift from God. Well, God, you sent the wrong gift. FedEx got this messed up. Yeah, actually, just this past week on Instagram, I asked my followers to think about their spouse and why they are a gift to them. And it was pretty amazing to see all the responses and how thankful they were. In a good way. Yes, in a good, good. way. You That's know, that, encouraging. Well, that they were able to say, this is what I am thankful for. You know, obviously there's things that we don't agree on or things that bother us or exasperate us. But really seeing the gift they are to us, I think, changes our perspective on that. How do we maintain that kind of approach to mm-hmm. think, dwell on those things which are good? Well, I think it's a <laughs> constant battle, just like... Yeah you know, against self and selfishness and just being thankful uh, for the ways that, you know, Pat blesses me. He's an encouragement to me. I know that he he's always there to cheer me on those types of things. If I can keep remembering those things, it's a it's a constant battle, but it's just being intentional about trying to remember that. And of course, if Pat, you keep remembering to do those things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Or um, I might remind him. <laughs> <laughs> I get a few reminders. That's but I, I think it's, you know, I think we'll either use our differences to compete with one another or compliment huh. one another. And mm-hmm. I think that there there's a reason why God has, has gifted us with the spouse that we have. And I can either choose to look at those differences and feel superior, feel better, um, be resentful, or I can look at those differences and go, you know what, that, in God's wisdom, uh, he's gifted me with Ruth for a reason, and um, she is meant to compliment me. She's meant to supply my weakness with her strength. And I love that approach. I love that concept. And for us as men to keep that in mind, yeah. well, both men and women, but men particularly, we need to be reminded of that, what God has done for us. Yeah. And it's so critically important. Yeah. We've laid a, gr- a really good foundation for the marriage mm-hmm. side and the importance of it in God's design. So then he says, okay, be humble, be selfless. This is why I brought uh, usually an opposite <laughs> into mm-hmm. your heart and yeah. into your love. And uh, then he says, okay, now you're going to have some kids. <laughs> yeah. This is God's plan no, for you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and the dynamics begin to change everything. The household, uh, describe mm-hmm. early years of parenting and what's going on there and the chaos yeah, of it. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, my kids are getting a little bit older, so our youngest is eight now. Um, But it's still crazy. It's just a different season. Um, But when they were little, I mean, I feel like I was just trying to get through the day. And then Pat comes home from work and he wants dinner on the table. And I can't (laughs) even, you know, I'm just really tired. I just need a nap. And so I think, you know, it is it is a wake up call during those years that, you know, we really have to fight for our marriage. Yeah. This is how long do those years last? (laughs) Wow. You know what? No, Um, actually. I'll tell you what, I feel like I can finally take a, di- a big, deep breath. And your kids are now... And my youngest is eight. Yeah. Um, and we're busy in a different way. I mean, they have different activities. Yeah. They're getting older. A um, little more self-sufficient. As, right. Like, and I can get sleep at night. And honestly... Wow, that can make a big difference. Hey, bingo. There's the yeah. deepest spiritual yeah. truth you've right. ever stumbled across. <laughs> Be well rested. Yes. Patrick, yeah. you were actually, uh, I think, into watching a football game, which I could so relate to yeah. on one Saturday, I think, Michigan. Yes. I don't know Go why Go you'd Blue. want to waste your time on that, but <laughs> but uh, watching a college football game, yeah. what took place? How did the Lord get a hold of your heart with that? Well, yeah, it was a, a scary moment. I, I was actually, I was, I was preparing to watch a Michigan It's always game scary to watch on. a Michigan yeah. No, I'm teasing. I'm <laughs> <laughs> teasing everybody. I'm just joking. No, we were. Ruth was actually running to the store. I think she was going to run to the grocery store, and I was given the assignment, and I mean that in the kindest way. I was given the assignment, <laughs> the responsibility of, of mowing the yard while she was gone. And at the time, we just had two kids, uh, Tyler and Bella, and I, and I don't remember how old they were, but they weren't terribly old. And uh, so I gave them, uh, you know, very good instructions uh, to stay in their room, gave them Legos to play with, and I gave some dolls for Bella to play with and to, you know, play dress up. And so it was only going to take me about a half hour to do the yard. And so I went out and I was scurrying to get the yard mowed before Ruth got home before kickoff. <laughs> yeah, and that's I was, the real truth. That was the real truth. Yeah, yeah. Forget so, Ruth, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. And I was almost done. I was on the last leg and we just a block away, we had these railroad tracks and that the road came over. And I remember turning to the left and I could see Ruth uh, just coming up over the railroad tracks and getting ready to turn right into our street. And as I continued turning left, 
Uh, I also saw Bella, uh, our youngest uh, at the time, uh, walking down the sidewalk, uh, carrying a large yellow umbrella. <laughs> and the problem was, is that she was supposed to be inside playing dress up, but she detri- decided to, to dress down. And I saw her walking down the sidewalk with a big yellow umbrella, completely unclothed. <laughs> and so you, you can imagine This is every mother's fear. <laughs> yes. You know yes. you're, and you're so, killing us as dads. Yeah. Right we're trusting you to wash the kids. That's you're right. killing it's, us. Yeah. <laughs> the father's union wants to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, I didn't know whether I was going to, you know, Ruth was going to kick me out of the house first or I was going to get arrested. But uh, so that's uh, sort of the, <laughs> the moment I knew that as much as we loved being parents and what a gift our kids were, th- this was hard stuff. Uh, th- this was a challenge. Kids are unpredictable, and they mm-hmm. really do disrupt in many ways um, that that marriage relationship, that yeah. they do join us in the journey of marriage, and we have to work uh, to keep them from coming between us uh, in mm-hmm. the journey of marriage. Just a little tip. It's play pin, either right side up if they're young, <laughs> upside down if they're older. <laughs> Just telling you, with a rock on it, maybe it's yeah. necessary. Yeah. <laughs> so Ruth, as the mom coming home and seeing this, I'm not going to let this story yeah. go. Yeah. So what was your angelic response to that? <laughs> yes, I know? think it was like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I can't even go to the grocery store. I blocked it out of my memory. Right, everything remember. falls apart. Every dad yeah. has heard this before, right? Uh, so you got you through keep it. Though. Together, yes, we did. We got we got through it. But I just I love that picture of. I feel like that is just a picture of marriage and young kids and how everything can kind of uh, fall out around you. You have mentioned a couple of times that it's get it's getting easier for you. How how old's your oldest? He's 15. So 15 to 8 are the range of the kids. It is getting easier. It does get a little easier at that point. (laughs) Self-sufficient. They can make a sandwich. (laughs) Isn't that happiness? (laughs) (laughs) But uh, dial it back just a little bit when that demand was so high. What were some of the practical ways that you protected and guarded your marriage? Uh, Maybe this will even sound uncomfortable at the expense of your kids. Right. Well, I think... During that time, what was really helpful for me is that Pat didn't look at me as the mom who had to do everything, but he actually came alongside me and helped me in so many just normal day-to-day tasks. That was huge for me during that time. That really helped me get through. That was an area I could have done a better job. How about you, John? You're, I, you're probably pretty good. No, I delegated too much. You delegated. <laughs> I could have come home and done better at that, you know. Yeah. But uh, Patrick, way to go. You yeah. get the A. Yeah. You a get plus. the Fs. <laughs> and how about for you, Patrick? What were some practical ways that you protected the marriage yeah, in I those think, busy years and even today? Sure. I, you know, I think um, for us, we like Ruth just said, we, we both went into that understanding that this is uh, us laying down our life for one another, that, that you know, Jesus calls a husband to lay down his life for his wife and his family just as he did for the church. And so I think us recognizing that this is something we had to do together, uh, that alone uh, helped carry some of those heavy burdens early on. But I think one of the things we've, we've done over the years is just redeem the time that we do have. I think oftentimes we get so caught up in looking at all the time we don't have in this busy season. And so I think looking at the time that we do have, um, that can go a long way. I mean, I know, um, you know, even still today, just Ruth and I going and, and walking the dog together uh, is, is time that we do have. That's something I've got to do every single day, multiple times a day. But we can take that ordinary everyday event mm-hmm. and use that. Um, as time together, uh, we oftentimes go to the grocery store together. Not not super romantic. Yeah, not, but do you walk the aisles together, or you, do you divide the list up and then meet divide at the it. end? We we divide it. Okay, divide, and, divide conquer. and conquer. But yeah. we still we're in the car on the way there together. There you go. Yeah, and yeah. I think one of the things we've done is our kids have gotten older. As kids start getting involved in sports, you know, activities and extracurricular activities, we've done our best to live with limits. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the mistakes that we make as parents is thinking that we have to give our kids the best of everything. And I'm not sure that that's always the best thing for them in the long run. And so I think we've been very intentional about saying, you know what, God, God does love marriage. He loves the family. And this time that we have together is so quick, it's fleeting. Mm-hmm. And so we want to keep that a priority. It doesn't mean that we become greedy with our time, but it does mean that we learn to live with limits. And that means that we need to say no to certain things that uh, for us practically, it means that our kids are not involved in four or five different events throughout the year. And there's things that, that we have to say no to, that you can be involved in this, but you can't be involved in that. 
you've got three other siblings in the family. And so I think those kinds of things uh, can go a long ways uh, to cutting down the business and uh, helping us to live with, with greater energy for one another. Yeah, and Pat, I got to reemphasize that because what you said there is really good, that you mm-hmm. don't want to give your kids the best of everything if it costs you your relationship That's and right. your marriage. That's that right. is something yeah. to walk away with today. That yeah. is well said. Yeah. You, you mentioned the book, something about the missing vow. Mm. That caught my attention because I yeah. thought, well, they meant vow. <laughs> but yeah. no, the missing vow. What is it? Yeah, well, you know, as a pastor, I've done all sorts of weddings, had the joy of doing weddings. And, and we've all been to weddings or officiated weddings. We've seen, you know, couples stand at the altar and make those vows to one. And I pledge to, you know, um, love you in sickness and in health, good times and bad times, uh, whether we're rich or whether we're poor. And the more I did that, as the years went on, I began to realize, boy, there's a big vow that's missing that as kids join a, a couple, uh, in this in this journey, that that that's that there's a tremendous vow that we need to make. This vow to love one another with kids in the house, and it's a missing vow for most of our ceremonies, and yet it's an it's an important one. That's a great observation, mm-hmm. actually, when you think about it. We don't include that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a little story that that was so funny about you guys getting out and getting away to a restaurant just to kind of get away from the kids. <laughs> I, th- this is going to resonate with every parent listening right now. What happened? Well, we were we like to take date nights. Now that our kids are a little older, it's a little bit easier. And um, we said, the kids were asking where we were going and why are you doing this and why are you leaving right now? Well, we need to get away. And, and I think our oldest son, Tyler, is like, what, you want to get away from us? Well, kind of right now we do. <laughs> you said it. You said it. <laughs> to be honest. Exactly. How did you respond? <laughs> Well, what? I think, I think that's exactly what we said was exactly, yes, we, we are getting away from you. Oh. <laughs> did, did you have to patch up or wipe his tears away? No, or? no, yeah. <laughs> no, I think they understand. You know, we've tried to help them understand that marriage is really important in our home. And, and I think we want to be an example to our children, not just to the world, but to our children. They're going to remember how we uh, made our marriage a priority in our home. So they were... He, it, he didn't have to wipe any tears. No, no, you're you're not. telling us that your child's not going to remember that mom and dad left us because they were tired of <laughs> yeah. us. They're going to see it as a positive modeling. <laughs> right, exactly. Love covers over a multitude well, of there sins. You go. Yeah. yeah, it was in jest. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, I'm sure yeah. it actually taught him a good lesson. Yeah. Listen, yeah. we're first, you're second. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. our no, marriage we, is the core of the family. Yeah. Yeah, and that is something that we that we you know we try to practice, but we also do you know talk about. It. We feel like that one of the greatest gifts that we can give our kids is a God-honoring marriage mm-hmm. and a healthy marriage, yeah. uh, that, that that will have an impact on them uh, for years and years to come. Now, let me put the pedal to you guys, because I think, in fact, the way we act sometimes is the opposite. Sure. That our yeah. kids are the most mm-hmm. important thing. Our marriage is actually second, because, honey, we don't have time to really concentrate on each other. Do you know how... Mm-hmm. And, and it's justifiable from a rational standpoint there's lots of to-dos and tasks mm-hmm. that need to be done. And me loving you right now in the way you need me to love you may not just, it may not, we, I don't have time. Mm-hmm. But that's not a healthy way to look at it, is right. it? It's the inverted uh, uh, position. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's, you know, one of the things that it is so uh, counterintuitive, you know, is, is kids come along, you know, there is this shift in attention and affection from your spouse to your kids. And rightfully so. I mean, kids demand and deserve a, a lot of time and energy and attention and affection. And so I think the, the desire there for us to be great parents is, is a good thing. I think the dangerous thing is when that desire to be a good parent overshadows the desire to be a good spouse. And so we want to protect that. We want to continue Proof. loving one another, yeah. uh, serving yes. one another, making time for one another, uh, even when we're trying to parent together. Well, I, I hope people are hearing what you're saying because it is so critically important. Um, you suggest this idea of self-care also yeah. Yeah, it was a big part of the book. Describe for us self-care and what you're getting at, not neglecting who you are. Right. That's just taking time for yourself to be in God's word first and foremost. I mean, that has to be our priority. But you don't know my time constraints. Know. You know, you just don't I know, know I don't. How busy my yeah. life is. Listen, I know, I Help know. Help me, friend. Right, and, and here we realize how many pockets of time are in our day if we pay attention. You know, we've got five minutes here, five minutes there. And God says we can talk to him at any time. Yeah, so, just take a moment. Yeah, just taking a moment. And honestly, I think as a busy, busy mom, 
that's what's gotten me through mm. is that I know I don't have to have an hour every morning to spend with God. I can spend five minutes here and five minutes there. And certainly there may be a season that I can spend a whole hour. Yeah. Um, but it's just making sure that God is the priority in my life. You know, I think men are much easier at saying, well, it's the other person's problem, not mine. Yeah. Women tend to own that. What have I not done? Right. What am I not doing as a mother? What am I not doing as a wife? And then that guilt just kind of compounds mm -hmm. and you feel bad about yourself. Then your self-care doesn't happen because mm. it just kind of snowballs. And I know women listening are going, yeah, that's yeah. me. I feel bad about every aspect of my life because I yeah. can't do it all perfectly. It, I feel Speak like to that woman who's there. As, as my children get older, I didn't struggle so much with guilt when they were little. But as they get older, I start to think, oh, no, did I totally mess them up in this area? Yeah. Or did I do this wrong? And something that I've just tried to remember over the years is that no matter what I do, the only reason that my children turn out at all is all because of God's grace. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I didn't even grow up in a Christian home and he took care of me. So certainly he's going to take care of them. Well, that's a good thing to remember that our imperfection is actually what he perfects. Yes, <laughs> it's absolutely. not our perfection that yeah. he perfects more. Right. Yep. I mean, I and that. that's dangerous to run that line. You mentioned five commitments that matter in times of trial. And I think this is a good place to end the program. Mm -hmm. What are those five commitments that we should take away from uh, your book for better or for kids? No, that's a, well, number one is this, is that we trust what God says and not just how we feel. Uh, Boy, that, that's that's such a, a critical um, point for us. We, we will pray and read God's word together regularly. We will keep Christ at the center, remembering that, that he's the one that gives us the resources that we, that we need to keep marriage a priority, to parent well, um, that we'll be selfless lovers. We'll, we'll commit to doing that. And then the final two. Well, the final two are we'll talk often, we'll talk openly. And then finally, we'll not walk through this alone. Yeah. And I think that's really fighting for your marriage, even in the midst of all the uncertainties that life brings. Yeah, those are so good for married couples to mm -hmm. remember. That's, uh, that's the place we're living. Mm -hmm. It is the kind of spiritual direction that we need uh, to get us not only through the child rearing years, but also to the uh, finish line yeah. where we're celebrating 50, 60 years of that's marriage. Right. And your kids and your grandkids yes. are saying, wow, how did they do that? Mm -hmm. And you have a testimony. We did it because of our commitment to God yeah. and his love for us. Absolutely. I mean, that is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Patrick and Ruth Schwenk, uh, for better or for kids, I love the emphasis that you have placed uh, on the family in this way. Hey, I'm John Fuller, and thanks for watching. Get more info about Focus over here and more from our guests over there. And be sure to subscribe to our channel as well.